Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video we are taking a look at the Frost Mage on the Shadowlands beta. I will tr try to cover everything from like base class changes to talent changes and talk a little bit about the conduits and the legendaries as well as the gameplay. So Frost Mage hasn't received that many changes going from BFA into Shadowlands. To our baseline toolkit, we got a few additions. We got Alter Time, which has been a class favorite for a long time. Um, so I'm very glad to see it back. There is a huge amount of like skill cap and play potential that you can pull off with Alter Time. Um, some very cool mechanics that you can cheese with it. So I'm very glad to see this return to the spec. Then we also got Arcane Explosion back, which for Frost, not all that exciting. Uh, and we got Fire Blast, again, a single target kind of filler ability if you're on the move and you don't have Icelands procs in the worst case. But even then, I'm not sure if we will end up using it. Um, another change was made to Mirror Images. It is no longer a talent, it's now baseline ability. But instead of like being a damaging cooldown, it's kind of a defensive cooldown um, that does a little bit of damage. So when you summon the mirror images, you get a 20% damage reduction. And on top of it, if you take direct damage, one of your mirror images will disappear. Um, so it's kind of weird. It's an offensive and defensive ability, but more so I think it's going to be useful for the defensive aspect. Then they also made a change to IC Veins in an attempt to kind of reduce the number of global cooldowns that mages had to use. And they made this change pretty much to all three of the specs. To Frost, they made it to IC Veins. To Arcane, they made it to Arcane Power. And to Fire, they made it to Combustion. So whenever you press those three cooldowns on either of the specs, you drop a Rune of Power. So you no longer have to Rune of Power, then cooldown, and then go. So it essentially saves you a global. Um, to make up for this, in the talent section, since Rune of Power is still a talent, even though you do drop it when you press your cooldown, it will now only have one charge instead of two charges. So as you can see right now, I'm specting to Rune of Power, so I can drop it. And then if I cast Icy Veins, there's a second Rune of Power. So obviously you won't want to overlap them because the effects don't stack, um, but... It reduces the number of Rune of Power uses you will have overall because essentially you have one ROP on a 45 second cooldown and your other ROP is on a 3 minute cooldown. Um, or for Arcane it's a little bit shorter. But it still plays pretty smooth. Um, the only downside is that overall throughout like the duration of a boss fight or throughout a dungeon you will get to cast less Runes of Power overall. Also in this row, since um, Mirror Images is now a baseline ability, we got the talent Focus Magic. So I'm pretty sure this was in the game at some point. Um, it essentially buffs someone to increase their crit chance with spells by 5%. And when they get a crit, you will get 5% crit chance for 10 seconds. Um, so overall, I don't think this really fits in too much with like plays nowadays. Um, maybe if you're like super close to crit cap and you're not able to get it. But even then, Rune of Power is just so strong. And then we saw Encanter's Flow being super strong with other builds. So I'm not exactly sure if Focus Magic will fit in to the talent builds that we will be seeing. Outside of that, everything else is the same on the Frost Mage. For baseline abilities and talents, nothing else has changed. Pretty much the only thing that's changed is the gameplay. Um, we went from doing heavy glacial spike builds towards the end of BFA into now everything revolving around your frozen orb and your ice lance damage. So ice lance will be the majority of your damage on single target and on AoE. So basically the entire gameplay for Frost Mage now revolves around having as many uh, procs on your Ice Lance as possible. So let's take a look at the legendaries because Frost Mage has a few pretty nice ones. The first big one, especially for Mythic Plus, is Freezing Winds, 
While Frozen Orb is active, you gain Fingers of Frost every 2.5 seconds. While Frozen Orb is not active, each Frost Bolt reduces the cooldown of Frozen Orb by 2.5 seconds. So like I said, most of our damage revolves around getting Ice Lance procs. So having Frozen Orb up more often and also guaranteed to get uh, a certain amount of Fingers of Frost procs during your Frozen Orb makes this an extremely powerful legendary both on AoE and really strong on single target as well. The next one we have is Grizzly Icicle. Your Frost, Fire, and Arcane damage against enemies affected by Frost Nova is increased by 10% and no longer breaks it. So this one is a little bit less PvE oriented, but in PvP this legendary might be really strong. Uh, especially against melee DPS, a lot of times you struggled to kite because you would Nova them and they would either get dispelled or you would break your own Nova by just damaging them. So this will make it so they take more damage while they're in Nova and it also no longer breaks whenever you cast those abilities. So this might see quite a bit of play in arenas. The next one is more of a single target oriented one. We have Slick Ice. While Icy Veins is active, each Frostbolt you cast reduces the cast time of your Frostbolt by 5% stacking up to 10 times. So while I don't think this will see use early on in the expansion, later on when we have potentially enough mastery and you know enough stats to go Glacial Spike, this legendary might be pretty strong because it's going to allow you to cast way more Frost Bolts to get way more Glacial Spikes. Um, so while no use early on, later on in expansion it might be quite strong. And then we have Cold Front, which I'm not exactly sure how I feel about yet, but on paper it could be pretty cool. So casting 15 Frost Bolts or Flurries calls down a Frozen Orb towards your target, hitting an enemy player counts as double. Again, this might be either a PvP or a Mythic Plus Legendary. Um, in Mythic Plus, you don't really cast Frost Bolts too much. Most of your rotation is either filled out by Ice Lances, or in Mythic Plus, you drop Blizzard quite often. So there's not that many globals where you cast Frost Bolts, so I'm not exactly sure how often you will be proccing the extra Frozen Orb but it is something that could see some play. Now let's take a look at the Covenants. First up, we have Radiant Spark, arguably the strongest Covenant ability uh, that comes with the Kyrians. It's a 1.4 second cast, 30 second cooldown. Conjure a Radiant Spark that causes arcane damage instantly and an additional amount of damage over 10 seconds. The target takes 10% increased damage from your direct damaging spells stacking each time they are struck. This effect ends after four spells. So this is super strong for Ice Lance because you're essentially able to get four back-to-back -back Ice Lances um, into this Radiant Spark and each of them is going to do 10% more damage. And since Ice Lance is our nuke uh, ability, our highest damaging single target ability, you're going to get a huge benefit from playing Radiant Spark. Next for the Ventir, we have Mirrors of Torment. It's a 1.4 second cast, 1.5 minute cooldown, so 3 times longer than Kyrian. Conjure 3 mirrors to torment the enemy for 25 seconds. Whenever the target attacks, casts a spell, or uses an ability, a mirror is consumed to inflict shadow damage, and their movement and cast speed are slowed by 15%. This effect cannot be triggered more often than once per 6 seconds. The final mirror will instead inflict a larger amount of shadow damage to the enemy, rooting them and silencing them for 4 seconds. Whenever a mirror is consumed, you gain a brain freeze. So the recent change to this is that it can only trigger once per 6 seconds. Uh, previously, it would just constantly trigger, and that was an issue because sometimes you would just overwrite your own procs that you got from it. Um, so this one is it's an alright talent or alright covenant. It might see some use in PvP potentially just because it does silence and it does root, um, but I'm just not sure if it's going to outweigh the benefit of having more damage on your Ice Lance. So next for Necrolord, we have Deathborn. It is a 3 minute cooldown, so it lines up with Icy Veins. If you don't take the Icy Propulsion Conduit, transform into a powerful Skeletal Mage for 20 seconds. While in the form of a Skeletal Mage, your Frostbolt, Fireball, and Arcane Blast hit up to 2 enemies near you, your target, and your spell damage is increased by 10%. So this one has a huge scaling potential. Um, obviously Kyrian is really good right now because I Ice Lance does a lot of damage. But if the damage of our abilities is a little more spread out throughout our kit, Deathborn might be 
really strong because just getting 10% increased damage and also making your builder um, or fill ability your, through Frostbolt cleave um, might be pretty strong. And again, this is one of the abilities that does show some promise for PvP. And then for Night Fae, we have Shifting Power. It is a 45 second cooldown channeled ability. Draw power from the ground beneath, dealing nature damage over 3.7 seconds to enemies within 18 yards. While channeling, your mage ability cooldowns are reduced by 12 seconds over 3.7 seconds. So this one is a little bit finicky. Um, the upside to it is that you get a pretty large amount of CDR on all your abilities. So this is going to affect all your abilities, but most notably your Frozen Orb and your Rune of Power will be usable way more often. The, on the downside is that you gotta stand still and channel for almost 4 seconds. And especially in Mythic Plus um, with a bunch of the new affixes, it is not a good time standing in melee and channeling for a long time. Um, at the beginning of beta, there was a build that utilized Night Fae and it was really strong, but I think they toned it down a little bit. So I'm not exactly sure how Night Fae will fit into the Frost Mage meta and the different builds people will be running. Next for the conduits, um, first one we have is Ice Bite. Increases the damage of your Ice Lance against frozen enemies by X percent, scaling with conduit rank. Again, super strong because most of our damage scales and revolves around Ice Lances. So this means that our primary damage dealing ability that's going to make up more than 50% of our damage gets a buff, which is absolutely huge. Then we have Icy Propulsion. While Icy Veins is active, your critical hits reduce its cooldown by X amount. So at rank 1 conduit, this is really low number, but as you scale up, you will start to get a pretty significant amount of CDR on your um, Icy Veins, even potentially getting it down to around 2 minutes, which is absolutely huge for Frost Mage. Then we have Shivering Core. Blizzard's damage and movement speed reduction is increased by 5%, and again, this will scale with Conduit rank. Overall, it's okay. Um, if we ever see a Freezing Rain build, uh, it might see some play, but Splitting Ice currently is just too strong since Ice Lances do so much damage. So I'm not sure if it's going to see play in the beginning of the expansion, but there's potential later on. And then we have Unrelenting Cold. Frozen Orb's damage is increased by X%. You will be casting Frozen Orb quite a lot, and especially if we end up using like the Frozen Orb Legendary, um, well, we have two Frozen Orb Legendaries, but either one, you end up using Frozen Orb more than just once every minute. So getting more Frozen Orb damage is pretty decent. Um, so overall, the conduits are fairly generic, but that's the case for most specs. Um, the one that I could see being really powerful is Icy Propulsion, once we're actually able to get a pretty significant amount of CDR on our Icy Veins. All right, so next let's talk quickly about how Frost Mage actually plays. Since there were no major changes to the spec going from BFA to Shadowlands, Frost Mage plays very similarly to how it did back in Battle for the Zara Lore, for example, when on several boss fights you could play the Freezing Rain um, Frozen Orb build. So that was the one where you would keep Blizzard down constantly and you would Ice Lance a lot. Um, except this time instead of taking Freezing Rain, we take Splitting Ice. So very similar ideas. Most of our damage revolves around using Frozen Orb as much as we can to get as many uh, Fingers of Frost procs as we can to just Ice Lance constantly. So overall, Frost Mage really, really strong, looking really powerful in Mythic Plus. Um, I think on the ranged uh, part of Mythic Plus, it's pretty much only getting beat out by like marksmanship hunters, but they're extremely busted. Um, so Mage is in a really good spot right now, in my opinion. Um, same goes for raiding. Uh, for raid, they there are a few different ranged DPS that are performing a little bit better, but Frost Mage definitely has its place. And the funnel damage it's able to bring on fights where you're able to Frozen Orb multiple targets, and then funnel all those FOF procs into your primary target is extremely strong. So overall, I'm very happy with the changes or the lack of changes they made to Frost Mage. 
if you've been playing Frostmage for a long time, it might feel a little bit of the same thing over and over. But if you're new to Frostmage um, and you like the playstyle, I'm sure you will enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching this video and let me know in the comment section below what do you think about the Frost Mage in Shadowlands? Are you looking forward to it? Are there any specifics that you'd like to see change that they haven't addressed so far? And if so, what are they? Again, thank you so much for watching the video and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.